What's going on, Realm? We're, we're, we're back with another review, man. Attic got you guys again. Today, we're going to review in kind of a game that's inspired by Dark Souls and games like Dead Space. And I know that a lot of people don't like when you compare games to other games, but I'm going to do that because that's what I do. Uh, a lot of this game kind of reminds me of those games. And, you know, before we get on with the review, you guys know what I'm about to say. Definitely hit that like button if you enjoyed this review. You can always subscribe to this channel for weekly podcasts. We talk about sports. Well, I don't. Lord King does. And we have a weekly podcast known as the Iron Lords Podcast every Sunday at 1 p.m. And we have the Attic Show every Wednesday at 5 p.m. And don't forget to follow us all on Twitter. Follow me at Lord Addict ILP. And without any further ado, here's my review on Dolman for the Xbox Series X. What's going on, you guys? Gaming out here coming at you with another video. You guys know I've been trying to pop out these reviews, been trying to play these games that really interest me and kind of give you guys an insight on how I feel about the game. Uh, this game is kind of like the other game I just reviewed. I saw this at PAX and I played this at PAX and I went ahead because I like Dark Souls type games. And the way the aesthetic I was looking at when I was at PAX, this kind of gave me a little bit of a Dead Space vibe as well. And it's called Dolmen. It's made by Massive Work Studio. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the story of Dolmen. Dolmen takes place in a universe where humanity has colonized several planets and private corporations fight for military and technology advantages. What's pretty much happened here is corporations have modified drillers. And what they are is just humans that are set into planets to pretty much mine for their resources and there's these this crystal called a dolmen crystal which allows the interaction between different dimensions and holds the potential of revolutionized space exploration so keep in mind like something like maybe materials that was made to make the relays in mass effect where you know they's extremely important they needed that to continue to advance the human technology to go to these places on here now it looks like at the beginning there's some kind of huge accident that happens and it looks like you're some form of a mercenary that's been hired to go to this planet called Rivian Prime or something like that and you're going there to take these crystals back and eliminate all the creatures that are there and there's a lot more surprises once you start to unravel the plot and story of Dolmen. Now after playing the entire game of this i can honestly say that i was interested in the world of dolmen and what exactly was going down in dolmen in this accident what was going down why you were sent there the creatures in here i feel like there's a variety of there but there's not like a whole lot of lore there and what's sad is when you get to a really interesting world that you like in a game but you felt like they could have put a little bit more time into making the lore of the game now i'm not going to sit there and say that the lore of this game is bad or anything like that and i know a lot of the issues that's going to come Come out from me speaking on this game is going to be stri strictly budget wise but i do feel like if they make a sequel let's have better lore let's have better storytelling let's have you know more cinematically i i know that that's expensive and that's not necessarily my fault if it's expensive but i do understand that a lot of players when you have these single player story told games like this cinematically is extremely important to really grab people's attention and get immersion going on and i did feel like that game was lacking a little bit here now the villains of the game i was very intrigued by and when i came across one as a boss fight it was extremely you know exhilarating it was a good time to be in that it's just like look next time if you guys make another one i don't think this was it i think you had the foundation of a story in a world building where you can make something like mass effect if you build onto it now obviously you have a long way to go before you get to something like mass effect but i didn't mind the story here now it's like i said they could have told it better and hopefully if they get a sequel and they make enough money to full-blown make a sequel on this game and it kind of looks like they're going to hopefully go that direction off of what the story was going about i hope they do cap capitalize on the story on the creatures in this game on what's going on on the drillers on the main bad guys in the facility and you know this mysterious organization that's sending these people to do all this stuff now let's talk about the performance of dolmen i played it on the xbox series x and 
Look, <laughs> let me be honest with you guys. This this is a really bad performing game. Now, clearly, I don't know when some of you are going to come across this that's watching this on YouTube. All the stuff that I could be saying is fixed. And I would very recommend Googling Domen, whatever platform you're playing on, and just see what kind of patches they've had. Because currently, there's a lot of performance issues on the Xbox Series X. There's a lot of pop-ups. There's a lot of stuttering. There's a lot of performance in general going on with this. Now, I did notice that there is a performance mode and a quality mode if you go to the settings on here, but I saw the difference. Let me, let me be very clear on that. I saw a huge drastic difference in how the game visually looks when you switch to quality mode. But when you start walking around, it's, it feels like a PowerPoint and I can't do that. So I stuck on performance mode for the most part. And look, did it run bad 100% of the time? No, but I will say that I myself came across more performance issues in this game than I have in probably the last five or six reviews that I've done. Now, I'm pretty sure there'll probably be a day one patch and some of the issues that I have hopefully will be fixed on that. But like I said, I encourage you guys that performance is huge with you guys. And to a lot of people, performance is everything. Why do you get a new Xbox Series X, new PlayStation 5? Why do you upgrade graphic cards so often? You want peak performance. And I do not blame you guys if you guys want to go ahead and look on Google and find whether or not the performance was fixed with this day one patch. I wouldn't look past you guys one bit. Now, I would encourage it, actually. It's better to be safe than sorry. Now, let's let's go to gameplay, because I feel like Dolman exceeds in gameplay and falls short in gameplay at the same time. The biggest gripe I have with Dolman is the slowness that you feel in this character. You don't feel fluid at all. You feel like you have a pack of bricks that's attached to your legs. Now, I feel like since the combat is kind of centered around everyone being slow, it's not like the other people are mad fast and you're slow. For pretty much for the everything, everyone is around the same type of speed, depending on if that opponent is normally a faster character. Obviously, if you use the kind of ability to move yourself to the other side of the room, that's different than just being naturally slow. Or you're flying around because there are some creatures in this game that fly they would clearly be a little bit more fast than you. But I did notice that when I played this, the speed just didn't feel right. It felt like I was extremely slow. And coming from, you know, Sekiro Shadow Dice Twice games and Elden Ring to a point, and even, you know, some of the Dark Soul games, I felt like this is extremely slow. Like, this kind of gives me a, like a Dark Souls 1 vibe or, you know, even maybe Demon Souls, maybe even worse than those two games in terms of with the, the pacing of the game. Now, it's like I said, those type of games I felt like was designed to be this slow. Some of the bosses, when you fight them, it feels a little bit more one-on-one -on -one because everything is so slow and that's can either be good or bad. Now I feel like it's in the middle. I feel like if they make a sequel or, or hell, even with this game, like if any of the developers are watching this, if you can make some kind of, you know, increase of speed patch i feel like this would go a long way I, I know that a lot of people like this type of slow gameplay but i feel like the people you're going to be really going towards was the dark souls community uh elden ring since it just got so popular i feel like you're going to want to gravitate towards that type of community and they generally have went away from the slow type of gameplay and i'm not saying that the gameplay is bad or anything it's actually a lot of fun when it comes to when it works but being so slow, I always felt like I was extremely at a disadvantage and it's a very challenging game, so maybe that was the whole point. But I did feel like they missed on the pacing and the overall speed of Domen. Now, when I was saying that it was kind of like a From Software game, like, you know, that type of gameplay, there is a lot of boss fights on here. And I will honestly say that you guys know how I am with comes to bosses in general. I like ev evolving, I like evolution. I like to feel like the bosses are kind of going with the, the flow, not necessarily just fighting the exact same way. And I actually see this is Doman's strongest suit. The bosses in this game are very difficult. And I'm not saying that they're impossible to beat or anything like that. I felt like some of the bosses in this game was harder than anything I did in Elden Ring. And that's just because in this game, you don't have no help. You also have really no consumables or any type of item to help you really accelerate or extend your extanimo or, you know, extend your health for that matter. There's no accessories to do that either. It's just pretty much you, your opponent, your weapon, their weapon, and you have to go from there. And I like that because a lot of games, especially stuff like Elden Ring, they give you summons to help you. They let you do co-op. Now, keep in mind, there is a multiplayer aspect to this, and I didn't really try it because I'm 
reviewing the game and I didn't have an extra person to do that aspect. So I assume that's going to make the multiplayer, the boss is a little bit easier. But even if you don't use that, it's, it's like I said, like there's no consumables. You and the opponent is extremely slow, but I feel like they always have the edge. They always have that attack that gets you. There is some type of element system in here. And sure, I do feel like it has a place in this game. I felt like the whole thing needs to be redone. It's this mode called an energy mode. And pretty much what it does is you have elements that your suit can have. You can either have fire, poison, or ice. And it pretty much engulfs your whole character in this element. Now, I'm not saying that this didn't really matter when playing the game. There are certain enemies that you could clearly see, yo, they're fire, I need to switch to ice. They're poison, I need to switch to fire. I assume that was the weakness of poison. It doesn't really go into details. There's not a lot of information in this game, I add. Now, I know that is a lot of the kind of gameplay choices that these type of games usually have with the lack of, you know, information. But as far as like the element mode or you know, I like to call it the reactor mode because I feel like that's what it is. I feel like they need to change that if they make a sequel, make it more important towards the gameplay because I felt like as long as I was playing the game properly and I wasn't getting hit too much, that mode didn't really mean so much to me. I do enjoy it and I like the concept of it. It's just like I said with previous things, like they need to really take this type of gameplay and consider it a little bit more and how they can interact with the gameplay in general, how attacks and melees can happen, how, you know, it might be able to change depending on what thing you do. Now, I feel like what would be good with this reactor mode or this element mode or, you know, how they should really have it is energy mode should be one of those things where if things are going south, it's always that last absolute thing that you want to do it's that last resort that when you're about to get killed you pop that up i feel like your energy should increase your strength mobility should increase you go a lot faster and i feel like that's what the way they should have went with this and it really engulfs you in attack because to me when you went on this it just made you slightly stronger and sometimes it would help with certain fight and certain abilities because when you when you did this attack you would actually stagger enemies a lot easier and to be honest with you there was enemies that staggered in this game but i never felt like i got a good grasp on how to make the majority of these stagger it was always random i know it's probably not random but for the most part they probably have ways that you stagger every one of these abilities and maybe i just missed something when playing this but to me the energy mode was effective but i don't feel like it should have been effective as it was i feel like this should have been the core of this game it should have been what set it apart from everything else and although i like what they did with the energy mode and i like the concept next time really focus on this mode and find out what you want to do with it so obviously because this is a souls type game you know the the gameplay that they actually went above and beyond to get there's a lot of aspects of your souls type of games that you can have in this for instance when you die you drop whatever currency you have they call it like a timeline when you get it you restore your timeline if you die you lose that timeline and the timeline is pretty much all the currency that you've established up to that point on death now i like this and i think this is the the standard when it comes to these type of games and i don't really have no issue with it comes to this now i do have an issue with the stats in general i feel like there's not enough information on the stats look i don't mind you information hoarding me when it comes to certain aspects of the game like how the element system works or you know generally information on the enemies and, and tactical things where if you figure out what element they're weak to but when it comes to your stats look man massive work studio go ahead and give us some kind of help system on what every one of these stats do obviously because i've played these type of games before i could pretty much you know strategically figure out what each one of these do and they do kind of give you a little bit of information but it's just like i like in in Elden Ring, when you click help, it tells you individually what all of them do and how they help you. And I felt like that kind of information needed to be on this game. And another thing, there's an equipment system on here and there's an actual, you know, crafting system on here and it's actually a decent crafting system there's boss things that you can get where if you defeat a boss you're able to get their weapon and you know what the interesting part about the boss mechanics in this game is like i said the boss fights are spectacular i honestly say that's the highlight of this game by far and you know what's even more of a highlight than amazing boss fights the ability to fight them as many times as you want that resource i was talking about dome in resource you get that throughout throughout the game fighting and killing enemies and you can take that resource and if you get a certain amount of them, you could go back to that boss room and interact with some kind of system or some kind of computer in front of it or go back to your ship and do it there where they're all there and you can actually
actually respawn that boss and fight them again. And keep in mind, the boss fights do have a form of multiplayer in it, so you can fight them hopefully with another person. Like I said, I didn't get to do the multiplayer thing with another boss, but I think that's interesting because the funny thing how the crafting system works is every boss has like a boss weapon or maybe armor. I didn't really see all of them. I saw a good amount of them, but I don't want to put out any definites. I don't know if there's armor that belonged to any of the bosses, but pretty much the only way to get that weapon was to go back and fight the boss again. And some of these bosses, like I said, they're very difficult. You have to really learn their patterns and they punish you for not learning them correctly. Sometimes you'll be doing very well and you mess up one time and that kills you. A lot of the bosses in this game have instant kill stuff. And what I like about this game is they let you go ahead and fight these people. They give you crafting systems to get better weapons and they reward you for going out and fighting them again. You know, conquering that boss again. And I like that. I just felt like there should have been more information with the crafting system if I wanted to. I should have been able to look what the crafting materials were. Now, sure, you could, you could see them when you pick them up. And I think that's pretty apparent on that. But I tried the to the best of my ability. And, you know, maybe I missed it where I was just trying to see what is that material that I need to make that armor or to make that weapon. And it wasn't letting me see. And it was, it was very frustrating because when you need something like that, it's very obvious when you can't see it and you don't know where it came from. Now, I'm not telling you to tell me where these you know materials were out in the wild but i at least would like to know what they're called instead of just having a picture up at the top and you know speaking of equipment there's a lot of different variety of ways you can play this game you can play more of a long range character you can play with a heavy weapon you can play with a sword and shield you can really play the way you want to play and i love all this but i did feel like some of the equipment was worth more than other equipment now i did have a a shield i don't know if it was any good or not but the shield kind of seemed useless on here and part of me wanted just to dual wield but when i went to try to dual wield it wouldn't let me dual wield now i do know that there is a sword that you can grind for to dual wield by defeating a certain boss multiple times to get the currency or the material whatever you guys want to call it off of him when he drops and you can use that to make this weapon and i like the fact that some of these weapons are really stat based like you need a certain amount of skill or a certain amount and um what was the the energy you need certain amount of energy to wear some of this armor and i like the way you do the armor as well where you would need the last piece of armor to upgrade it to another tier but i felt like that whole crafting system maybe just a little bit more information on how it works and maybe a little bit more information on you know the crafting system in general like i didn't know that you can upgrade an armor to another tier just by using the last one or i would have done it a lot sooner i went through half the game maybe even more than half the game not knowing that going out there with the default armor and that was a very frustrating time maybe that's the reason i thought the game was very challenging is because i did have that disadvantage on myself and you know i, I i'm not going to say that the the crafting system was horrible it's just like i prefer if you give me more information and maybe give me like a charismatic person that does it for me when i talk to him i hear like some nice little dialogue or something there's not a lot of dialogue in this game and to be honest with you the sound in this game is kind of absent in general i feel like they really need to work on that i feel like you know between the the feeling you get when you hit someone and the sound of hitting them could be a done a lot better and i'm not saying that you know they they lacked in this entirely because some of it was there but a lot of it wasn't and i feel like they need to really focus on that maybe in a patch or a sequel or something now look pretty much what i'm saying about Dolmen, made by massive work studio is this game has a lot of issues and it's kind of like a from software game that doesn't really know what it wants to do and it does everything okay but nothing fantastic and i think that when it comes to these type of games you want to do at least one thing great and i feel like they did a bunch of things okay would i recommend buying this game i mean probably not because there is a lot of performance issues i feel like some of the systems didn't work correctly but one thing i will say is the boss system and the difficult of the game in general is kind of unique. I've never really played a game like this, and it is one of the hardest kind of From Software games I've played, even some harder than some of the From Software games themselves. Now, I'm not going to say they all were harder, but I will say that some of the boss fights in here was on another level than anything I've ever seen in some of the From Software games. I'm saying if you like a challenge, then I would say this would be worth your money. You know, maybe if you don't like a challenge, you want to see exactly if they fix anything in the future. Like I said, a Google search is one step away, man. Search Dolmen 
patches on all the platform, whatever platform you have. I think this is on Xbox, PlayStation. It's probably on PC as well. So definitely look up that. I've always told everyone that goes to need to be more educated on when you buy these games. Make sure you don't buy something that's broken. Now, I'm not going to say it was broken on Playboy or anything like that. It wasn't. I felt like the game functioned correctly for the most part, but there was a lot of performance issues. And I felt like some of the gameplay was lacking there because I don't really think that they you know knew exactly how they wanted some of these features to work and i'm not saying it was bad it's just like i felt like they need to look at this stuff if you make a sequel i hope this game sells well enough to you know justify a sequel and someone will uh, be able to green light a sequel because the foundation of this is fantastic i feel like this studio the only difference between them and someone like from software is a budget I feel like if they hire more animators to make the animations better, more graphic designers to make the, the world pop out, more fiber, I think it would be a lot better than what it is now. Now, I'm not saying they would ever compete with anything like From Software. I think that's still a couple games away. And to my knowledge, this is one of the first games, if not the first game that Massive Work Studios made. So that's probably phenomenal right there to make something, uh, now maybe not this quality because the quality isn't exactly there, but you know, something as fun as this is when, if you like these type of gameplay, I wouldn't recommend buying this if you don't like from software games you're probably just going to waste money at that point because i do think that that is the overall best aspect of Dolmen is the difficulty in the boss mechanics of the game and just how the boss feature in general sometimes you have three boss phases on something and i like when you do that when you change things up on me i really enjoy something like that it's like i said the story is okay. We just need it told better. The performance is horrible. I wouldn't say horrible. It's just not that good. You know, it, it's probably going to be better after day one patch, but I don't report off day one patches. I report off what I played it off, and I played it, and the performance was up and down all the time. Gameplay was good, but it needed to be a lot you know overhauled a lot in the aspects of the gameplay and the music was pretty much non-existent i didn't there were some bosses that had good gameplay music but i felt like they could have really improved on that and a lot of that comes down to budget this stuff costs money and i don't know what kind of how many people was on Dolmen, how many people works at massive work studio but what they did and for the amount of people that i assume is not going to be a lot did on this game I like what they showed me and I feel like there is a lot of potential in this foundation of this game called Doman. and like I said when I was doing the story thing the way they kind of ended this game makes me think there's going to be a sequel if it gets greenlit I don't know if it's going to get greenlit we don't even know the sales game's not even out yet but anyway tell me what you guys think in the comment section below is Doman you know really interesting you guys I'm kind of curious on this it's not any form of like subscription service like game pass or playstation plus but if it does come onto those services in the future I do think it's worth a download it's 40 dollars, and like i said if you're a real big fan of souls type games and you want a challenge definitely worth the 40 i myself wouldn't recommend it i would say just wait till a lot of these performance issues gets fixed and even after that like i said some of the gameplay is really lacking here but they got a good foundation and i think if you guys really enjoy these type of games and you want to encourage you know the evolution of this type of genre go out there and support it man i think you would enjoy the game itself especially if you like your souls type games you know it's like i said if you don't like souls type games stay away from it. but anyway that's the review on Dolmen for the xbox series x made by massive work studio i appreciate them for the code man they really showed us logo there at pax D's. and until next time this is Gaming Addict, and until the next review, I'm out of here. Peace.